All right. Welcome to the next edition of the Cosmic Fury SG podcast together with me, one and the other line, Mr. Fias the Boss. The ping pong is back. The ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. no, no, no ping pong. Or should I say, Sunbe is back. Sunbe! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, if you're following the channel uh, so far, we have yet to master any Korean names. Uh. Yeah. So very sorry. Uh. So, <laughs> so sorry to all our Korean fans and friends and <laughs> gangs, anything. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Alright, so earlier on, you posed the question about... um. The top five uh, favorite movies in 2019. Yeah. Um. I I don't know. I may have a difficult um task of trying to remember uh what I've seen and what I like so far in 2019. I think I should mm. let you start off first, uh, because like I'm sure you got a few, right? Uh yeah, I actually have a few. Mm-hmm. Uh okay. No, in no particular order. Hmm. Uh, first one is, of course, the genius himself, Mr. Jonathan Peel, mm. and his movie Us. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm. Okay, that movie. Ugh, I, I, I won't go into details about, like, you know, like breaking down the movie and all that kind of thing. Mm. Just, you know, something very general. Because, uh, let's do this is like really a short segment just to talk about, um, uh, movies that were good so far this year. So mm-hmm. that people, any anyone who listens to the, this segment at now, uh, will actually try to check out the movie. Besides those like obvious, obvious famous ones, and you know. Mm-hmm. So one movie in particular, of course, is Jordan Peele's Us. Uh, it's a follow up to his uh previous release, which was uh Get remember. Out. Yes, Get Out. Mm. So. I mean, anybody who watched this movie would definitely have to agree with me that it is a brilliant movie. And the, have, have, have you seen this movie before? Yes, and I would definitely say me and another, we were like, after the movie finished, we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it, it, it felt like it, one thing, you know, besides everybody's, uh, you know, everybody saying like good stuff about the movie, like, you know, uh, how the plot is, you know, how twisted it is and whatnot. And the idea of uh, doppelganger, mm. you know, in, in play. Mm. But one thing that I really appreciate this movie is because it does pay pay homage to uh, old school horror movies during mm. the, you know, Late Twilight 70s, Zone. Uh, yeah. yeah, Twilight Zone, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark, you know, kind of movie. Yeah, if you yeah. like, you know, because nowadays a lot of people when they watch Horror movie is always your typical jump scare. Yeah, people are tired of it, bro. Mm. Yeah, so now bringing back... Because the thing is, if you look at the plot of the movie, um, especially like, you know, how they were holding hands and, and you know, um, forming that line and all the kind of things and how, you know, the idea of like your doppelganger is living underground, living above ground and all. You know, the idea of that doesn't make sense if you put into reality yeah. but it is interesting in the fact that it brings back for me yeah. it brings back childhood memories yeah. you know mm. uh we uh you know on tuesday nights they used to play horror movies mm. and you know, before that they used to play shows called like sightings and and twilight yeah. zone you know all the kind of thing so that's why especially people around our generation tend to appreciate the movie even more. Like, mm. the younger generation, they'll probably be like, what the fuck is this shit? Mm. You no, know, it doesn't make sense. Honestly, since when horror movie makes sense? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, especially for the ending. It's one of those, like, it gives you that question mark, question mark, question mark kind of a yeah. moment. Yeah. But but still, you like you really want to know what is the meaning. And, mm. and the movie does it well enough to make you wonder, like, hey, come on, man, I need that answer so badly, right, that yeah. you would definitely want a sequel for it. That's so smart. And the thing is, mm. Jordan Peele is not doing a sequel. He's leaving it as it is, as that. That we, itself we, is, like, that is cruel. <laughs> yeah, that itself is amazing <laughs> because the thing is, everybody is like, oh, you know, you need to explain this and all. 
And he basically, in, in one of his interviews, he said that, no, I don't have to. I can just leave it as it is and let, just let your imagination run wild. Mm. Because now the thing is, there's two projects that he's currently going to be working on that is exciting the fuck out of me. Eh? Mm. One is the reboot of Candyman. Candyman, okay. Yes. Candy, Candyman. I mean, it's, it's one of the prominent horror movies where we and it's a predominantly uh, a black uh, guy that's the villain. I can't remember his name. He acts in a lot of obscure horror movies as well. Mm, okay. And the other one, a live action of the cartoon Gargoyles. Gargoyles? Yes. Holy fuck. I love that show, Sia. <laughs> I love it so much, Sia. So when Gargoyle. I heard it, I like, are you serious? I'll be like, wow. I used to watch that a lot on like Saturday mornings, yeah, like fucking yeah, 10, exactly. 10 a.m. is yeah, still a power, yeah, that show. That, that, that cartoon is awesome, man. And he's going to do a live action of uh movie. Yeah, a movie. Holy shit. Wow. Yep. So, not going to go further into us, but, you know, this is one of the movies that actually one of the highlights of this year. Mm. So, another movie for you. What do you think? Um... Maybe I let you go first, uh, because the problem I'm having right now, the ones that I highlight, because I want to highlight something that is not a superhero genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if I, if I were to say maybe the three that I want to mention, all of them mm-hmm. are superhero genres, which kind of like, man, I need something that's not a superhero genre at this, at this point of time. So, yeah, that's true, that's true. So I let you continue first, uh, maybe your second one, Toby? John Wick, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Look, the thing is, you see, the thing is, I fucking love Keanu Reeves. Eh? Mm. If those people who are following my Instagram today, like, you see, I've been blasting Keanu Reeves, like, mm-hmm. on my uh, Instagram yeah. and all that. Eh? I saw your so, Insta story. Eh? <laughs> yep. So, the thing is, uh, John Wick, first one was amazing. I thought the second one wouldn't be amazing. It got better. Mm. And I thought the third one would be more amazing and it got better. So, <laughs> I don't even have to say more. Anybody <laughs> who watched John Wick and doesn't like it, uh, you all can go fuck yourself. Uh. Moving on to the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, <Right>. next mo- <laughs> the next movie is a bit of an obscure movie. Uh, mm. uh, not really much people are talking about it and all. <clears throat> but the movie is called Greta. Mm-hmm. Okay, it stars uh, Chloe Grace, uh, Chloe Grace uh, Moret. Uh, you all mm-hmm. remember her from like Suspiria, Kickers, mm-hmm. <coughs> and also Isabel Hubert. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> Isabel Hubert. It's a French name, so I'm <laughs> trying to pronounce in the best French accent that I could it's, do. It's, it's okay. Uh, by now, people already realize that we, we butcher names on a regular basis. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Isabel <laughs> Hubert, if you if you pronounce it in normal English, but... But you instead, you're going for Hubert. Hubert. <laughs> you have to have that, that airy thing. <laughs> airy or silent? Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but <laughs> it's still whisper. Uh, so... <laughs> So, anyways, uh, <laughs> the premise of the movie is very similar to um, a lot of, I call it the stalker genre kind of movies. Uh. Mm. You know, uh, movies like, um, what's that? Oh, shit, what's that Robbie William movie? The one that he processes photos for family. Shit, I can't remember. Hold on, give me a minute for me to Google this. Things. Uh, yeah, it's called One Hour. Uh, for those who haven't watched the movie, uh, oh, so the one that he uh take photos of like families, then he keeps yes. it for. Okay, yeah, I think I, yeah. I, think I remember. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, movies like that and all, and also quite recently, uh, one that was released called Ma, the one with mm. Octavia Spencer in it. Mm-hmm. So Greta. Uh, the thing is, I haven't watched uh, Ma, but from what I read with reviews and also from what friends are telling me about it, uh, it's 
the saving the only saving grace of the movie is Octavia Spencer. I mean, she's an amazing, amazing actress. Uh, so, mm. but is Greta, that, uh, is that her first role being like the psychotic killer? Because so, all the time I saw her in like comedic roles or something. I think it is no. I think it is her first role as a psycho. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but the thing is, um, for Greta is. The plot is really good, uh, like from the premise of how she, uh, how Isabel and Chloe Grace, the characters, you know, how mm. they met and mm. the circumstances they met and how the stalking became and, you know, all the kind of thing. It's, oh, it's, it's really one of those movies that I very low key and nobody really heard of. It's a creeper kind of movie. Uh, creeper like, kind of movie, yes, exactly. Mm. So that movie Greta is one that uh, I recommend anyone that who is into that kind of you know stalker genre kind of movies. But it's not uh, well marketed, right? Like no, no, no it's very, not. very under the radar. Because honestly speaking, I don't even remember seeing cinemas here. I only mm-hmm. came across it. I think online I was like, oh shit, this movie seems interesting, and you know mm. some people were talking about it in the movie online community and you know? all. Mm. So, yep, that is one. Uh, other than that, other than that, it's your typical, like, I mean, the, the biggest box office earner of this year, of course, Avengers mm. Endgame. Mm. Uh, then you have, like, Spider-Man and, you know, all your cinematic universe. I try to look for movies that don't people don't really talk about or, you know. Mm. And another movie that I... It's actually considered one of my top in this year is The Perfection. It's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's basically about uh, this girl who, <clears throat> in certain circumstances, lost her chance to play in like a, like a really prominent uh, uh, music school and whatnot, mm-hmm. and how she, be- she lost her mom when in came into the picture of being in the same group of people and, you know, plotting her revenge. And it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's really more than what I, I'm saying. Uh. What I'm saying is really very vague. So, uh, and the plot is good. The, the twist in the middle is good. Uh, so it's on Netflix, uh. It's on Netflix, yeah. You can definitely check it out. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's called The Perfection. So that is right. one obscure, another movie that is really low key, nobody talks about. Mm. Uh, and I think that's besides all the blockbuster movies and all. I think these are the few that I think really caught my attention for this year. Mm. And as you can see, it's a lot of thriller, horror based movies uh, because yeah, that is like my kind of thing, I guess. Oh, you know what? Now, now that you like, I mean, uh, I suddenly like remembered the movie that I watched. Uh, I think it was released earlier. It's just that I watched it in two thousand nineteen. Uh, it was uh the Green Book by uh Marshall Ali. Oh yeah. yeah. I. No, it was released this year actually. Uh, I think it was released in the states first. And then oh, later, okay, okay, uh, later okay. in Singapore. But oh my god, yeah. I love I love this movie. So I, like yes yes, 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 yeah, I totally forgot about this movie. Like the Green Book. Oh my god, this this movie is such a emotional roller coaster, itself. Yeah, <laughs> and the, like, the, the 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 character development between uh, Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali is really good uh, throughout the whole movie. Yes, yeah, like the the way they acted. Like they like so called feed off of each other's like um like professionalism like I don't know how to say other than their chemistry mm-hmm. within the within the movie is is fantastic uh, like yeah it is it is yeah and, wow shit I totally forgot what this movie is. then like you can see how so called the doctor try to develop like from from one like. The foot, the like the first act, right? Like he mm. tried to find uh, Viggo Mortensen as the driver, yeah. And from there, they kind of like uh, we didn't because they travel so much in a car together, and then they start to develop this friendship. Yep. 
and it's a it's a very organic friendship which which i think really resonated uh. i mean they, they are friends even outside of the movie right so when mm. come to movie it, it's it's awesome uh. i don't know how to say other than this movie gave me so much emotional roller coaster <laughs> Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, especially for us uh, who who are in bands and all that kind of thing, mm. you know, like for yourself and myself, you know, when we go overseas mm. and play shows and all, you know, you kind of relate to the movie in the sense that, you know, yeah, I do. a musician that mm. is traveling on the road, mm. the, the trials and tribulations and whatever that he has to go through, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Mm. So you can really relate to it. You'd be like, even though it's, It's a whole different genre of you know how it is and whatnot, but it's like it's really you can something you can relate to. Okay. Yeah, and and the the fact that um he has to struggle with a lot of uh, racial discrimination mm. Mm. and and also like there is a reveal that he's also gay mm. and all this like all these emotional things. That's portrayed in the in the film. I think like Marshall Ali. Oh my God, this guy. How many Emmys does, has he have? Two. Uh? I think. I think two. Uh, one two. for Green Book. One for Moonlight. I may I, be wrong, but yeah. I I definitely say it's fucking well deserved. Uh. Yeah. Like And he's the new Blade, yo. <laughs> Ooh. So lah, uh, I unfortunately we have to wait for it. It's gonna be quite some time uh, before that thing actually appears. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I I'm guessing maybe like. 2021 uh, but looking forward to it uh, no doubt about it uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> drop, drop my jaw so, like what is this yeah. <laughs> when you put on the cap bleed <laughs> oh my god Marvel you sneaky bastard yeah, yeah. so yeah uh, notebook uh, um, a green book sorry Yes, yeah, no, 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 no. Ryan, no. Eh, Ryan, yeah. what is his name Ryan Gosling and yeah <laughs> what do you want what do you want <laughs> I want you to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Green Book. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah lah. That kind of like a uh, emotionally driven movie. Two thousand nineteen. Is there others? I can't think of. Uh. No, not uh, really. Yeah. Because the summer But, of two thousand nineteen is bamboozled by superhero genres. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the thing is, we want to, we want to showcase movies that that. You know, like not many people talk about. You know, mm. even mention. Uh, yeah. So, so the ones that we have so far, are, what do we say? Us, Greta, mm. Perfection, Green Book. Yeah. Yep. The yeah, that's why I say earlier on. Uh, I guess it'll be a little bit difficult, lah, because I think you you watch more and have a list already. For me, I think most of it is. On 2018, uh, mm. like like movies like uh, A Star Is Born, uh, the one. Do you like A Star Is Born? I I did, and oh. it's a it's a very sad movie. Ah, uh. I I would say Lady Gaga in that movie. Some people say she cannot act, lah. Uh, but to me, that is her most natural self. Ah, uh. do you want to know something crazy, you know? A Star Is Born, right? There's actually a Bollywood movie that came out before that with the exact same plot and everything. Are you serious? A Bollywood movie? I'm not shitting you. Uh. <laughs> you gotta give and me that why, link, man. <laughs> and that's why the thing is when uh, A Star Is Born came out, that was like, oh, you know, A Star Is Born, that kind of thing. And mm. when I read the plot of it, I was like, eh, hey, isn't this <laughs> that Bollywood movie that I watched the other time? The, because to what I understand, uh, this is like the so-called third rendition of the original. Eh, wait. Uh, technically second, second rendition. Ah, uh, because the original one was, I think, was it the second version was Bar- Bar- Barbara Streisand, and there was a version before that also. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, uh, so I don't know about the Bollywood one. Ah, uh, I mean, I just like know like right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. Ah, uh. so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the thing is like uh when when I saw it, I was like eh, I because I I honestly I haven't seen or heard about the Barbra Streisand one and whatnot now uh, but mm. but the Bollywood one definitely I seen yeah the the Star is Born 
Yeah lah, it's not a 2019 movie lah because the the topic we're talking about now is 2019. But mm-hmm. most of the list, I if I were to make, would definitely keep going back to 2018 lah because the the ending of 2018 got some really good stuff. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. like uh, like 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 I said, the uh, star is born, and mm. then uh, we got Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody was yeah. Oh my god. Ah, uh, then what does we have uh, last year? Uh, um, last year, that's a good question. I mean, I there's also there's also a slew of uh superhero movies also lah, like as usual, of course. Yeah. But I I oh, seriously... I remember what other movie this year that I is Loki and is damn good lah. Uh. What what movie is it? It's a Korean movie actually. Okay, what movie is it's it? The, it's the same week that John Wick was released in Singapore. Oh, the Parasite ah? No, no, not Parasite. It's yeah. called The Gangster, The Cop and The Devil. Oh, okay. That was a brilliant movie. I loved it so much. Mm. And uh, Ma Dong Shok... Ma, Ma Dong... Alright, we, we shall see Fia's attempts once again. <laughs> Ma Dong Shok... Ma, <laughs> Ma Dong... The guy who's gonna be in, in internals, is it? Yes, that's the guy. <laughs> okay, that's the only reference I can make. <laughs> Don't ask me to pronounce his name. And also, uh, he was in Ten uh, Ten to Busan, but like, Train to Busan. Ten to Busan. Ten to Busan. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but eh, but the guy is going places, man. I honestly speaking, eh, he's actually <laughs> favorite Korean actors. Hmm. Eh. Actually, not one of my favorite. Eh. He's my. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So even the film, uh, like I was saying, uh, so yeah, this is another film that this year. If anyone that hasn't watched it, y'all really need to watch it. Uh. And but you know what? You but know you watched it in the in the in the theater, is it? Yes, I watched ah, it. Ah, so, okay, okay. You want to know something crazy about this movie, though? What? Produ- one of the producers of the movie is actually Sylvester. Ah, Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, of course, uh, it stars uh, Ma Dong Seok, Kim <laughs> Mu Yul, Kim Song Kyu, and Hyo Dong Woon. You know, uh, you are pretty, <laughs> you are pretty close to pronouncing kimchi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> bro, racist. Bro. No, it's not. It's not racist. Kimchi is a food. Okay, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But so, yeah, so we need fucking training, man. For this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this this movie, yes, uh, plot is very simple. Uh, how a a gangster, a mob boss, a cop team mm-hmm. up to catch a serial killer that tried to kill the mob boss and you know tried to kill other people as well. So how. Basically, the 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 whole movie, the build up, the character development, the bonding of the different characters, the ending, everything is so good about this movie. Eh? And I really have to give props to uh, Korean directors because mm. in the past couple of years, actually, if you look at it, uh, they step it up, bro. They really step it up a lot. You got movies mm. like Train to Busan. You got series like Kingdom. You got if you really look at it, like, there are tons of good Korean movies that are out there that are, people are not talking about. Even like the other one, uh, the other day that you were telling me about the priest. Oh yeah, the the so called uh, the two priests. Uh, what was it? Uh? The what? two priests that that uh, try to exercise. What's uh, yeah, what was the title again? Priest. Is it? The priest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, the guy who played the priest also was in one of my, I think, favorite action Korean uh movie, which is on Netflix. Uh, Ilang the Wolf Brigade. Yes. If hey, fuck sir, that, oh my god, I love sir that movie. That's why Koreans got this hidden gem of very talented mm. uh actors and directors doing some low key mm. awesome. Awesome action movies, uh, horror movies, um, suspense thriller, all yeah. the works are like, wow, sell a top notch, ah, seriously. It's crazy. Even like their horror movies and all, Wailing, uh, mm. oh, there's so many I can't even remember now. 
Mm. But like I say, uh, the thing is, for those who are listening, if you are, you know, like, like really into like Hollywood movies and all the kind of thing, try to venture into the Korean side of movies because they really have an extensive uh, range of movies from like, you know, your typical dramas to like horror, thriller, you know, kind of thing. Mm. And they are, honestly, now, you know how we used to think that George Romero used to create like the whole legendary faces of, uh, you know, zombies and mm. whatnot, the kind yeah. of thing. Mm. Fuck, bro, the Koreans have stepped it up, yo. Yeah, like, they definitely give a run for the money for the typical, like, zombie genre, like, in, yeah. in, in, in that sense. I mean, you you just look at Kingdom, the particular scene where that lady just stand up, you know, bend front, that kind of thing. I'm hey, like, that's not easy, Sia. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on, Sia? I never seen it before. You asked me to do that, uh, I barely people... off the ground, uh, still on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you don't see that kind of thing in like like a lot of like ho- Hollywood movies and all. Like, mm. my God. So yeah, the and... anyways back back to what I was saying. Yeah, but the gangster, the cop, and the devil is something that everybody needs to check out because it is an mm. amazing movie. Yeah, unfortunately for this one, I, I like I said, I can't give a a, a list of uh, like top five uh, because um. Just as a better list, uh, I have basically <laughs> no list other than one movie I just mentioned. Yeah, uh, because the thing is, if if you would really want to talk about all the different type of uh, recent movie that release and all, of course, predominantly it's going to be conquered by the superheroes. Uh. But uh, I mean, you look at Shazam, Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man, what else? Yeah, like... We're not saying we don't like the movies. Those movies are great in its own right, lah. It's just yeah, that exactly. like we we decided to maybe talk uh, a little bit straying away from the the superhero genres, lah. Because sh- like Shazam, not bad, lah. I mean, seriously, it's a surprisingly very entertaining. entertaining movie. Yeah, and I I was fearful, of course, at first because I mean it's DC, and 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 then we know DC track record of how they handle their movies, ah. But, uh, for yeah, and for Shazam to come out the way it is, I was very surprised that I was very happy lah with the movie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but what I really wanted was that at least if I were to make one, mm-hmm. um, do you have you ever watched uh, the movie The Judge, uh, a Robert Downing Jr. movie? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I I want a movie emotionally right to be something like that in 2019. So far, haven't yet. Mm. Maybe, maybe, maybe Green Book is around that category, yeah, but that emotional, wah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I relate to it, lah. Yeah, exactly. That's why, that's why. But the thing yeah. is, like, now it's already August, and we only have, uh, four more months to the year end. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully, there are a few more good ones to come out throughout mm-hmm. the year. I mean, like, there are, of course, all those big blocks like Star Wars and what mm, mm. but I'm the thing is if we the next time when we do uh, a segment like that we would definitely want to cover movies that like I say is low key yeah. something that you know new for people to check out or... so yeah la, like um, I think I think as far as uh, top 5 2019 maybe we'll come back again Yep, by, the end, sure. by the end of the year and then uh, we recap if the there's whole any, year itself yeah yeah if there's any changes or not lah. so far I think the recommendations done by Fias is something uh, you guys should, should check out lah because by now I think they should be available somewhere online I yeah it is so mm. in recap the the <clears throat> five movies that uh, I mean we let's, the six movie that we talk about is Us of course the Jordan Peele one Mm. Uh, John Wick because it's just John Wick uh, so fuck you <laughs> hey nobody's yeah. fighting against you no. <laughs> I can send some people saying like duh of course John Wick like duh of course I'm telling you it's John Wick so shut up <laughs> then uh, there is Greta there mm. is uh, Green Book mm. uh, there is uh, The Gangster The Cop and The Devil mm. and what's that one more Give me something. Would you consider Mars still? 
No, I, 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 I haven't. I haven't watched Ma yet. And honestly speaking, there are still a lot more movies this year that I have yet to, you know, venture into, like, really go and... Hey, bro, there's, there's one more I think we should really anticipate. What? The Irishman. Oh, yeah, the Robert Downey Jr. and... No, no, the uh, Robert De Niro. Oh, Robert De Niro, sorry. Uh, yes. Robert Downey Jr., fool. <laughs> Since no, when? Who did the Irishman? <laughs> oh man! It's okay. Uh. It's in the middle of the night. Be, uh, tired. Uh. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So, but yeah, that's that's one movie also to look mm. up for. And yeah. also, um, <clears throat> I have a recommendation, but mm. I haven't got the chance to watch this movie yet. Uh, maybe we can watch it and talk about it uh, another time. Uh. But this movie is called Skin. So, uh, what do I sense is a horror movie? It's not a horror movie. It's actually, oh. uh, what is that? Um, <clears throat> you know, you, do you remember Jamie Bell? Jamie Bell. Yes. Mm, hang on. Is it a last year movie or what? Uh, no, it's this year movie. I think. <clears throat> or was it last year? No, it's this year. Yeah, this year movie, I think. Is this yep. guy is this guy on Fantastic Four before? Uh Jamie Bell, I think he is. Was he? Was he the thing? Yes, correct, the thing. Because <laughs> oh <my. laughs> I look his face like where have I seen his eyebrows before? <laughs> but this um uh this is one movie that uh, a, a friend of mine told me to check out. Uh, okay. It's basically, I mean, the, the plot of it is simple. A young man uh, who's a, what, a part of a white, white uh. skinhead, white supremacist uh, gang. Uh, you know, how he he decides to change for himself. You know, he oh, makes friends okay. with um, his counselor who's a black guy and how, you know, he wants to have his own family and how he deals with uh, getting out of... Um, being in a skinhead gang and uh, being mm. a white supremacist and all that. Mm. So this is one movie that I haven't watched, but uh, like I said, a friend recommended. So maybe something that uh, you guys can check out as well. This one reminds me of a what? Uh, a skit from Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Which one? The one where he did a skit about the KKK. And... Ah, and he... he ah. <laughs> Shit, yeah, 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 I remember, I remember that one. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not gonna say the words that he said uh, because you're gonna get us in hot soup, uh, but yeah. Oh my god, the the reason why he divorced his wife is because she is a. Uh... Oh my god, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dave Chappelle, uh, the fuck up. <laughs> then I see the synopsis of this. Uh, of what you just told me, right? The skin. Yeah. Let's I, I I suddenly remember about Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that this one made it into a serious toner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my god. But anyways, this is the few recommendations that we have so far for this year. Mm. We will probably come back again uh closer to the end of the year to talk more about the other like the review the whole year's movie and whatnot. Yeah, so hope uh uh to get more within the year. So the least maybe we do a top ten. I don't know. Uh yeah, maybe, yeah. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it for this yeah. uh, casual edition of the Cosmic Fury SG podcast together with uh, Mr. Fias the Boss. Yes, ping pongs. Uh, Alright, all right. Uh, so I'm one and uh, we're going to sign off for now and stay tuned for more episodes from the podcast. Cheers. Cheers.